Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sade. If you're new here and if you've come back for another one, then I hope that you enjoy this. I'm very excited for today's video. It's been very long overdue. I've been meaning to do this for so long. Today I'm talking through all of my power tools, how I use them and why they'll be useful to you as a beginner, novice DIYer. Before we jump into the video, I just want to let you know if you're new here and you're not yet subscribed that I do loads of DIY projects, loads of crafty bits, lots of upcycling. I use all of these tools in all of my projects. So if you are looking Looking for room makeovers, upcycling furniture, making things from scrap, then you should totally, totally subscribe to me because I do all of that. <laughs> subscribe to my channel, switch on the notification bell so you don't miss a project. I'm currently in the middle of a huge room reno. Thumbs up as well if you enjoy it and you get something from it, that will really help me out. And if you've got any questions, if I don't cover something, leave me a comment. I try and get back to them as much as I possibly can, especially when they're questions. Today I'm working with Works, my favourite power tool brand, and they said, let's do a video where we teach people how to use the tools and I was 100% game so let's get into it. So of the power tools and pretty much for most projects that you'll be doing you're going to need these as a basic. Something to sand, something to cut, something to drill holes and screw things together. So let's talk about fixing things together. If you've got nothing else then a handheld screwdriver will do, absolutely. If you've got loads of flat pack furniture to put together it may be worth you investing in something like the slide driver from Works. It makes the job faster, it's very lightweight and it takes up no room at all. So perfect if you've got a very small flat or house or area that you store tools in. It stores all the bits that you'll ever need inside the screw head so that you'll never lose any. It also allows a single handed installation by holding the screw in the retractable screw holder. If you want something that does more and also drills holes, then you're going to want to opt for a drill. It doesn't need to be a fancy drill. I would recommend the Works Combi drill if you're looking for something under £100. If you're going to be doing a lot of work and you want it to last for say 10 years or so, you're going to want to invest in a brushless motor drill, something like the Works WX352. If you're wondering what a brushless motor is, it basically means that there's no friction in the drill, so it's less wear and tear, less heat given off, perfect if you're using it on a daily basis. You'll want a drill like this if you're, for example, renovating a house and you're using your drill every hour, every day, rather than just hanging a mirror every so often. If you're a little bit nervous when it comes to DIY and you haven't used a drill before, you may want to opt for the Works AI drill. This drill has three sensors which help to automatically detect when you need to stop screwing or drilling with its three key features. That was six, not three. <laughs> The bit lock feature is pressure sensitive so it knows when to stop. The safe dry feature notices when the screw head is flush to the surface so it backs off. Now this isn't helpful if you are meaning to screw the screw heads below the surface but you can enter the standard drill driving mode for that instead. In the pulse assist mode the drill drives at a slower speed so it avoids stripping the screw heads and damaging the bits. This is perfect for example if you are needing to put up loads of plasterboard and you're scared about damaging it. Now if you're drilling into concrete, load bearing lintels, anything that is solid, concrete or brick, you will need a slammer drill. This is a very important investment, trust me I know from personal experience, if you invest in the right tools it will save you time, energy and money on blunted drill bits and the hassle of not being able to drill into solid concrete. <laughs> when we were building the pergola on the side of the house and we were drilling into the brick in the house because it was a lean-to structure, my gosh, we tried to use a normal drill, didn't work. I just wish we had the slammer drill back then because it would have made the world of difference. Next up is sanding stuff down. Now of course, of course you can absolutely just use a sheet of paper to sand things down. However, if you've got a huge piece of furniture that you're, for example, sanding down, you are going to get a workout, a huge workout. It is going to take you so long. You're going to go through so much sandpaper. Your hands are going to ache the next day, trust me. So invest in a electric sander. There isn't really a lot of need for a full belt sander, especially when you're just doing DIY slash home projects, but you will want something that collects the dust, especially if you're working indoors. Remember, if you're working indoors to always ventilate the space and wear a mask. The Works 20 volt detail sander is perfect for this. As well as just being a great quality sander in general, you can actually attach a detailed bit on the end which allows you to get into all the little nooks and crannies that you may be working on on your piece. Now for more variety and flexibility when it comes to sanding, you may want to opt for the sand deck. The Work Sand Deck is a five in one tool with five different plates to make your life super easy when it comes to sanding anything down, including getting on those curves, edges and bends, inside nooks and crannies as I say, it also has an oscillating plate and a wider plate for a bigger surface area of sanding. Now onto my favourite bit which is cutting things. <laughs> 
Now, of course, again, you can use a handsaw. There is always a manual way of doing something, but if you were cutting a lot of sheets, if you are cutting into thick pieces of wood, you are gonna want a power tool to do this. Let's just do a little bit of safety first. Cutting with electric tools is actually quite scary and intimidating the first time you may do it. Don't worry, just make sure that you are reading your manuals before using, you are using them and practicing with them safely. You are wearing all your PPE that you need to, which includes masks, protecting your eyes, protecting your ears, even protecting your hands sometimes. Keep your hands away from the saw at all all times and make sure that you are removing the battery pack whenever the tool is not in use. If you're new to DIY and you want a versatile tool but nothing too scary just yet, I would suggest a multi-tool. It vibrates to make its cuts rather than using a sharp blade. The Work Sony Crafter is a multi-tool which can be equipped with different attachments, including different blades and different sanding options. So it's a great all-round multi-purpose tool. Examples of when you might use a multi-tool. If you are laying laminate or tile and you need to cut the door frame so that they fit underneath. If you're scraping off adhesive residues, if you're removing grout, or for smaller cutouts in wood and tiles, the Sony Crafter is perfect. Another example is if you were to fit a new socket and you needed to make a plunge cut without having to damage loads of the wall around you, just make it the perfect size for that socket, you would use the multi-tool because it would quite easily carve out the shape nice and simple. The Works Axis is compact, lightweight and cordless and is perfect for both indoor and outdoor projects. Quite often debate as to which is the more useful tool, the jigsaw or the reciprocating saw. I'm going to tell you what both of them are now but the Works Axis is actually a two-in-one so you don't even have to worry about which tool to spend money on. The Works Axis actually has a reciprocating head so it allows it to turn from a reciprocating saw to a jigsaw in just one movement. You'd use a jigsaw when maybe creating shapes using a narrow blade. It's a much much more precise tool. Whereas the reciprocating saw is less precise, more powerful and often used for demolition projects. The Axis is a great investment because it can do 90% of cuts. The reciprocating saw is really good for pruning, cutting down Christmas trees, firewood and then the jigsaw is really good for small DIY projects. One of my favourite tools is a circular saw and it can be very intimidating the first time you use it but it is a very helpful tool. If you are quite new to DIY I would recommend getting large sheets of timber cut down at your local timber merchants but if you want a more accessible way to do this yourself then a circular saw is the perfect tool. The Works Work Saw is a small compact circular saw which will get the job done but it also offers other features too. The Work Saw allows you to adjust the angle from 0 to 45 degrees so that you can make beveled cuts in your wood. It also has a parallel guide attachment so it allows you to create really straight flush lines when using it and the saw itself you can make adjustments of the depth of it up to two inches. It's lightweight, it allows single-handed operation and once you have used that tool you'll never want to put it down because it allows you to make so many different types of cuts and it's really fun to use as well. Now if you want a tool that makes really accurate cuts at varying angles you might want to opt for a miter saw. A miter saw has a blade on a swing arm which moves left or right or at an angle to allow you to make beveled cuts. You can use a miter saw when it comes to making quick cuts for crown moulding, panelling, picture frames, door frames, anything that you need to make a perfect angle for and a really clean flush cut you want to use a mitre saw. The Works Sliding Mitre Saw offers all of those features when it comes to angled and beveled cuts but it also has a laser guide level as well. This is just a laser line that lines up with the blade and shoots across your piece of wood so you know exactly where you want to make the cut. The sliding aspect of the Works Sliding Mitre Saw is really helpful as well because it actually allows you to make longer cuts across larger pieces of wood because the saw can actually move whilst it's cutting. If you don't need the slide in feature you can lock it into place and you can make really easy right angle cuts through two by fours, just like a chop saw really quick and simple. Now I've spoken through the kind of basics that you want out of your power tools but there are a couple of things as well that I think might be helpful so I'm going to let you know about them. A work table will allow you to make cuts on your pieces really safely and precisely. Very important when using say a circular saw and a jigsaw. You'll need a clear work surface, you'll need clamps to hold your wood, you may even want the work surface to actually be portable so that you can go and use it in different areas of your house or in your garden. The Works Pegasus is actually a two-in-one. Again it is a saw horse and a one workstation. The Works Pegasus is so so strong and sturdy and it'll actually allow really compact storage as well so when you are not using it you can pop it away and it doesn't take up any room at all. A quality sight light is something that is very necessary especially when you live and work in England. <laughs> UK weather is just so up and down up and down it's probably the same way you are especially at this time of year. But even into the evenings and the nights when it starts to get darker you may want to still continue working so a sight light will help to illuminate 
illuminate the space that you are working in. The Works Sight Light is high intensity, it's LED and they're very cool bulbs. It's big enough to project a lot of light but it's small enough for easy storage and it also comes with a hook so that you can hook it in place and direct the light exactly where you want it to go. One more quick thing to mention on the power tool fronts is that you want to invest in quality pieces that are not going to cause you hassle when using them or storing them. It may seem irrelevant and you may think I just want to opt for the cheapest one. Sometimes that's what you've got to do, absolutely. But if you can afford to invest in quality pieces that will last you years, that will not run down on you and that will be reliable, then you should absolutely do so. The reason that I love the Works family of power tools is because they all operate off of the same lithium iron battery. So if I'm using a drill at one point, I can swap out the battery, put it in my sight light, swap out the battery, put it in my sander, swap it out, put it in, you know what I mean? So I'm always between tools all the time, especially when I'm doing renovation projects. It's just so easy. There's always a battery lying around somewhere, always one plugged in. So my tools never run out of battery and they're all cordless as well. So I don't have to worry about cords being hazardous, tripping over them, cutting into them by accident. If getting into DIY is something that you want to do long term, especially invest in good tools so that you don't have to keep replacing them because you will inevitably end up spending more money down the line. Now for all of those power tools, including the Pegasus Workbench and the Works Sight Light, I have linked them all in the description box down below for you if I can. If I haven't managed to link that particular tool, it's probably just because it's out of stock at the moment, but I have linked the Works website anyway, so you can go and have a browse. I hope that was really helpful for an initial video into power tools. And I think we covered quite a lot of ground. We actually covered a lot of topics and some really helpful tools that you can use in so many diverse projects. If you did enjoy this video and you found it really helpful, please do give me a thumbs up. It lets me know. Hit the subscribe button as well and the notification bell so that you never miss an upload from me and you can continue on this journey with me of DIY realness. Just want to say thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it when you watch my videos. It gives me all the inspiration to continue filming. So thank you again to Works for working with me on this video. Anyway guys, I'm going to sign off now. I will get thinking about some videos that I can film for you. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care of yourself guys. Bye. Mwah.